I've decided to divorce you. What the heck? I'm getting remarried to my mistress, so I don't need you anymore. Out of the blue, my husband hit me with a bombshell. But surprisingly, it worked out well for me. Oh, really? Well then, goodbye. I'm Holly, a 48-year-old housewife. I've been married to Toby for 15 years. We live as a family of three with our son, Max. We used to have my mother-in-law, Jenny, living with us. I had a full-time job before, but due to the need for Jenny's care, I resigned and moved in with her. Since then, I've been juggling caregiving, raising Max, and working part-time for our household finances. It's been super busy every single day. Time has flown by in a hectic blur. I've been very dissatisfied with my marriage because Toby doesn't do anything at home. He's dumped everything on me. Even though I've never had an experience with caregiving, he left me to take care of Jenny, who required an intermediate level of care, on top of handling our son and doing all the housework. Not only that, he often adopts a high-handed attitude. Hey, clothes are all scattered all over the place. Oh, sorry about that. Max threw them around. Then pick them up right away, or school them. Make him pick them up. I was just helping your mom to the bathroom. Don't talk back to me. You're my wife. Act like it. Keep quiet and just do what you're supposed to do. He yells at me like that. I find myself gradually unable to argue back. I think no matter what I say, he'll just get angry. For him, his mood is the most important. And if anything spoiled it, he blames me for everything. He has a nasty temper. I often wonder how things ended up like this. When we were dating, he was loving and caring. He treated me very well and tried hard to make our dates enjoyable. I thought I'd have a happy marriage with him. So I enthusiastically accepted his proposal. But when I opened that lid, I found nothing but a terrible husband who engaged in emotional abuse. Still, I didn't resort to a divorce, probably because of my strong sense of responsibility. I couldn't abandon Jenny, and I wanted to raise Max properly. So, even when Toby treated me awfully, I endured it for their sake. Well, there might have been a part of stubbornness on my part, too. I wanted to handle the housework and parenting well to shut him up. There was a competitive streak in me. In any case... I didn't want to give up halfway. If I divorced him and ran away then, I would have surely regretted it. No matter what I did, thoughts of Jenny needing care and Max would have kept haunting me. If so, I didn't think I could spend the rest of my life happily. So I didn't take the path of divorce. Although I'm not sure if it was a good or bad decision now, but ah well. I busted my butt trying to balance housework, parenting, and caregiving. I had even taken up a freelancing job from home in the middle of it all. Toby's spending habits were reckless. We often struggled to make ends meet. So, I decided to use my experiences to start the side gig. At first, it didn't bring in much income. But gradually, the rewards started coming in. I realized... I could still do anything if I set my mind to it. I had even busier days after that. Jenny's health kept declining and she needed more and more assistance. That meant I had to be by her side for many things she couldn't do alone. Not just bathroom stuff, but even eating was becoming a challenge for her. So I cut the food into small pieces and then I fed her. Toby didn't even react to it at all. Rather, he seemed to be avoiding his own mother. Don't let mom be in the living room while I'm eating. It ruins my mood. How dare you say such a thing? She's your mother. Once she's like that, she's not my mom anymore. Anyway, take care of her out of my sight. He often came up with such selfish and unreasonable demands. On weekends, he always went out drinking, coming home completely wasted. He was loud, high-spirited, and reeked of booze, 
and honestly, it was a real hassle. Even though I was exhausted from a busy day, he summoned me, ordering me to bring him to the living room and such. Even if I ignored him, he kept yelling, so I had no choice but to obey. That kind of thing happened all the time. It felt like I had another big child besides Max. Other than that, whenever he was in a bad mood, he immediately started berating me. You're too plain, you know? You've abandoned being a woman. It's terrible. Can't you try a bit harder? Why did he need to say such a thing? I didn't have time or money for myself. And that was all because he didn't do anything and splurged for himself. Buying expensive clothes, cars, you name it. And I was always stressed about it. In that situation, I couldn't afford any luxuries. And even if I could, I didn't even have time to do something for myself. I wondered if he didn't understand that or if he was intentionally making snide remarks, but either way, I thought he was a jerk. I swore to myself that I was going to give him a piece of my mind one day. I hoped for the day to come sooner rather than later. Then I told myself to responsibly take care of Jenny until the end. I was pushing through with a rebellious spirit against Toby and a sense of responsibility for caregiving and parenting. Still, the tough times outweighed the good. While Max was growing up just fine, seeing how Toby was treating me, he started acting out against me. Hey, old lady. I have a field trip tomorrow, so give me some money. Who are you speaking to? Don't call me old lady. Shut up. Just do what you're told. Yep, totally the same tone as his dad. I couldn't stand being spoken to like that by my son. And most importantly, I was concerned about him growing up with that kind of language from a young age. Max, you need to use more polite language. When you grow up, you're going to face some struggles yourself, you know. Ugh, don't lecture me, old lady. I'm telling you to stop that. No matter how much he rebelled against me, I tried my best to straighten him up but he seemed to be heavily influenced by his dad. He never cleaned up the dishes after eating, just like Toby, and he always played games instead of studying. No matter what I said, he kept up with a rebellious attitude. When he entered middle school, puberty hit, making it even harder to relate. He didn't tell me anything that happened at school and didn't show me any school notices. I often had to rush to prepare things at the last minute. Seeing me in a frenzy, he just laughed out loud, and Toby insulted me, saying I was incompetent. I kept trying to figure out how to communicate with my son. I wondered if changing my approach would work. So, I tried being extremely nice, but he just got more arrogant. I was at the wit's end, as he kept playing games all the time and staying out late at night. Even though I scolded and guided him many times, he responded with insults every time. As he got older, he stopped listening altogether. When I found cigarettes in his room, I scolded him severely. But he just said everyone did it and showed no remorse. I thought it was better for Toby to reprimand him in that case, so I spoke to him. But he just said it wasn't a big deal as a lot of people smoked in his time too. With things like that, it was impossible to make Max into a decent adult. I didn't know what else to do anymore. I had to do housework, take care of Jenny, and work for a living. With too much to do and think about it, I was exhausted every day. I was amazed I hadn't broken down physically. I was truly grateful to my parents who gave me a sturdy body. While enduring those tough days, time flew by. My marriage surpassed 15 years, and Max became a high school student. Then, Jenny fell ill and required hospitalization. I visited her every day. Just the removal of caregiving reduced physical exhaustion significantly, so honestly, it was a relief. Nevertheless, I had decided to take care of her until the end, so I faithfully went to see her at the hospital. Toby and Max never showed any concern for her. As far as I know, they never visited her. During her hospital stay, Jenny often thanked me. I've caused you so much trouble. 
we're not blood related, but you diligently took care of me. I always respected that. And I've always felt sorry about it. Oh, Jenny, please, don't worry about that. No, no, it's not that simple. I've really made you go through a lot by making you do everything. I'm especially sorry about Toby. I never thought my son would have such a terrible attitude. If my late husband and I had given him better guidance. No, it's not your fault. Don't feel responsible. The conversations we had during that time were meaningful to me. She appreciated my efforts in caregiving. And I felt that my hard work wasn't in a vein. It felt good that I was rewarded like that. She stayed in the hospital for two months. Then one day, her condition worsened and she passed away. I'm glad to this day that I was with her in her final moments. Toby and Max didn't even show up. I despised them, wondering if they were truly blood-related families. I wanted them to at least show their faces at the end. After that, I proceeded with arrangements and preparations for Jenny's funeral. Of course, Toby didn't do anything and left it all to me. I expected it, so I took charge and moved forward on my own. I was able to send her off in a beautiful service. Afterward, I sorted out her belongings and handled various procedures. Finally, I thought I could take a breath. But then I noticed Toby acting suspiciously, doing something secret with Max. Whenever I entered the living room where they were talking, they would stop and act fidgety. And when I left, they would huddle together again and talk about something. I wondered what they were scheming. Well, whatever they were up to, it didn't concern me anymore. I had learned not to expect anything from them. No matter how strict I was with Max, his personality didn't change. Toby continued his high-handed attitude towards me and our marital relationship was non-existent. There was nothing more I could do about them. If they were planning something, I decided I'd take action too. I started making preparations. And then about two months passed. It was summer vacation at that time, and since Max was home all day, I started working at a cafe. When he was at home, he gave orders, just like Toby. That made it impossible to focus on work. So I went to a cafe to finish it. Even though it was a short time, I could concentrate and complete all by the afternoon. When I thought I'd stop by the supermarket before heading home, Toby suddenly called me. It had been a while since I received a call from him. Surprised, I answered the phone. Hello, what's up? Where are you? I'm on my way home after working at a cafe. Carefree, huh? I mean, what work? You were just sipping coffee without a care in the world, right? What do you want? Did you call just to make fun of me? Oh, right. I did have something to tell you. I've decided to leave you. What the heck? I'm talking about getting a divorce. You can't just drop something so serious out of the blue. And what about Max? Well, I don't need you anymore since I'm remarrying my girlfriend. Well, I guess it's tough for you to be suddenly dumped like this, but hang in there. He dropped a bombshell out of nowhere. But surprisingly, it worked out well for me. No, really. Well then, goodbye. Huh? I said, goodbye. We're divorcing, right? Oh, um, sure, but you're taking this surprisingly lightly. Well, I've been wanting it for a while, you know. What? I can't keep going with a low life like you. Now that your mom's gone, you probably think you can just discard me, right? But once I bid farewell to her, I planned to leave you too. Don't act like you're the one in control and dumping me. Oh, is that so? But you don't have any income, and your future looks pretty bleak from now on, doesn't it? Maybe you're putting on a brave front, but our paths diverge when it comes to it. Who knows? Well, you can believe whatever makes you feel better. You sound so smug. I have nothing more to discuss, so let's handle it through the lawyers from now on. Lawyers? Where are you going to get that money? I said we're done talking. You're bothering me, so I'm hanging up. Hey! I forcefully hang up the phone. 
Then I immediately booked a hotel room and stayed overnight. After that, I put my plans into action. To tell you the truth, I had already rented a place to live after separating from Toby. It was ready for me to move in any time, so I relocated the next day. I quickly bought essentials, making it possible to live for the time being. Then I contacted the attorney I had consulted and asked him to proceed with a divorce. A few days later, Toby called. What do you want now? What the heck do you think you're doing? You sent a mass email to my company. Well, everyone at your workplace should know what you've been up to until now. You've been emotionally abusing me for a long time, and there's also the matter of your affair. The evidence photos were attached, right? You can't deny it anymore. How dare you? Because of that, I became a laughingstock. My boss even cut me out of the big project I was leading. Oh, well, can't blame him. People with personality issues probably shouldn't be in positions of authority, right? What you've done is just despicable as a person. God, are you seriously going to demand alimony? I have been supporting you financially all this time. Wasn't that enough? Of course not. I'll take whatever I can get. Ugh, even if you succeed in squeezing money out of me, remember, you're still beneath me. Is that so? I make a decent income as a freelancer. Now that I don't have to take care of you and Max, I'm increasing my work volume. There's no problem living on my own. You're kidding me. Anyway, I won't be talking to you anymore. Follow the lawyer's instructions and handle the procedures precisely. If you refuse or ignore them, I'm ready to fight in court. Ugh. After that, Toby finally agreed to my demand and paid the alimony. I received about 50% of his annual income in a lump sum. A few months after I started living alone, I received a call from Max. Hello? What on earth do you want? Mom, please help me. I'm not your mom, though. What are you saying? Just help me, please. What happened? Um, I got caught shoplifting, and the store is about to call the police. Oh, wow. I'll give you the location, so come quickly and apologize together. Why me? Because you're my mom. Oh, I see. Your dad hasn't told you yet, huh? What are you talking about? You're my stepson. What? When you were one year old, your dad and I got married, so we're not biologically related. You're a stranger to me now that I'm not with your dad. No way. He was left speechless upon learning the unexpected truth. Well then, why not ask your mom to be for help? A young and cute girlfriend of your dad. Ugh, that woman just lazes around at home all day and goes out having fun without paying any attention to me. So I can only rely on you, Mom. I see. Well, too bad for you. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. You should just accept the consequences and obey what the officers tell you, okay? What? No, please, help me. Nope. Bye. I hung up and blocked any further calls. Later, I found out from Toby's relatives that Max was taking to the police station. He was also investigated at school and ended up getting expelled for various reasons, including being caught smoking. He became a shut-in, and he and his new mom-to-be constantly fought. She apparently couldn't handle the situation and eventually left the house. Toby's now single, taking care of a son who does nothing, and stays at home, all while facing cold glares at work as the abusive cheater. It's a tough situation, but he brought it on himself. On the flip side, I'm enjoying my comfortable new life. Work is coming in steadily, income is growing, and life is pretty easy. I'll keep working hard, build up some assets, and occasionally treat myself to a bit of luxury. I'm planning to live a fulfilling life from here on out.